Now it's time for Lefties Losing It. And you may have heard about the White Dudes for Kamala group. They're typically described as weak, COVID-crazy soy boy losers, but that sort of characterisation is deeply unfair. Just look at this strapping young man charging like a buckwild bull at a Trump supporter. You can tell which ones are Kamala fans. They're the ones wearing masks outdoors in 2024. And they're the ones screaming abuse and threats. You were talking about my boy. You were talking about my boy. I will slap the goddamn face now. No violence. Joe Biden's no president. No violence. No violence. No violence. I feel that way. No violence. Let me tell you something. You're a born Retroactive. She seems nice. If she doesn't want her boy manhandled, then perhaps tell him not to attack folks. Pretty simple, I would have thought. Now, CNN might be chock full of lefties losing it, but sometimes they have a lone conservative up against the crazy libs, and often that lone conservative is Scott Jennings, and God bless him, he just keeps recording W's. Trump. This is what Kamala Harris and Tim Walsh believes, is that it's none of your business what women do with their body. And so stay out of our doctor's offices and stay out of our bedrooms. Well, I guess I'll have to speak up for the babies. They're not here to speak for themselves. Lord have mercy. Now, Kamala has been doing interviews with lefties all week, from the Call Her Daddy podcast to Stephen Colbert to the truly vile Howard Stern, who is apparently a male feminist nowadays. Do you think there are people who will not vote for a woman because she's a woman? You know, my best associations in radio and in business have been collaborating with women. Yeah. And I don't understand this philosophy, especially guys who have daughters and sisters and mothers. This is the same Howard Stern who fantasised about sexually assaulting school shooting victims and sexualised the Olsen twins when they were just 13 years old. It was like, there was like really good looking girls running out of there with their hands over their heads. Yeah, I, mean, I think the bomb teams are still working. Did those kids try to have sex with any of the good looking girls? They didn't even do that. At least if you're going to go kill yourself and kill all the kids, like, why wouldn't you have some sex? And then I said, oh, get the uh, Olsen twins, Mary, Kate, and Ashley Olsen. What are they up to? Well, those are the two kids from Full House. The two, remember the two little girls from Full House? Sure. Well, now they're like 13, and they're pieces of ass. Oh, yeah. And he wasn't just vile about women and children. He also thought this was funny. Hey, Robin, what does you call a black rocket scientist? I don't know. Oh, no. But, you know, anything can be forgiven and forgotten if you become a rabid anti-Trumper. Here's Howard Stern talking about how much he hates Trump voters. I don't hate the guy. I hate the people who vote for him. I think they're stupid. I, I do. I'll be honest with you. I have no respect for you. Joining me now with the latest from the US is Sky News contributor Kosha Gaida. Kosha, while Florida is hit with Hurricane Milton, which has pounded the state with ferocious 100 mile per hour winds, producing a series of devastating tornadoes, the vice president, the woman who wants to be leader of the free world, was kicking back having a beer with late night lefty TV host Stephen Colbert. <laughs> I'm just curious. Okay, the last time I had beer was at a baseball game with Doug. So. Okay, so cheers. Okay, there cheers. You there you go. <laughs> um. Ooh. Kosha, we have hundreds dead after Hurricane Helene. We've got many more missing, injured, homeless. Hurricane Milton was about to make landfall in Florida and the Veep is lying about the Florida governor, Ron DeSantis, and giggling and drinking beer with uh, Colbert. I mean, to me, that should be the next Trump ad. And it probably very well will be, Rita. Uh, before this hour is up, he's been doing this thing where he just takes live raw footage of her and says, I'm Donald Trump, I approve this message. Um, look, I think on a macro level, it is interesting to see that she's suddenly doing this media blitz, albeit with friendly outlets. Uh, it is, I think, telling a little bit because it's a it's an about turn from the strategy her campaign was pursuing uh, in, in the last 35 days or so. But the specific outlet, the way it was set up with the beer and the laughing and all of that, 
with the backdrop of unfortunately, despite the evacuation orders, we are going to see hundreds of people die and hundreds of people already did with Hurricane Helene. Mm. Uh, it's a fair point. It does come across as not the best judgment or, or a little bit tone deaf. And I'll make another second quick point too. I get late night uh, TV and it's meant to be sort of fun and drinking and all that on there is appropriate. Millions of people do, but I don't think it was actually the smartest move for her because there have been memes on the internet about mm. her, you know, maybe uh, being a little bit more prone to the drinking and also just <laughs> she's trying to establish herself as a serious person. Uh, and I don't know that that really helps advance that. So on multiple levels, I don't think it was a wise move, but um, you know, in the media cycle that we're in, it'll probably be forgotten and covered with uh, her next next appearance and the next outlet she's gonna do. You're right there, Kosha. Even Saturday Night Live uh, made some jokes about Kamala's uh, fondness for wine. Uh, I think it's a little bit unfair, but <laughs> that narrative is certainly out there. Now, Hurricane Milton has made landfall. Over 5 million Floridians have been forced to evacuate marking the largest mass evacuation in over a decade. Over one million homes are without power. Here's what Florida Governor Ron DeSantis had to say. We have seen a weakening of the storm over the last 24 hours. Uh, we also saw it sped up, which means it's hitting the Gulf Coast uh, prior to high tide, which we hope will help mitigate some of the storm surge. There's already been 116 tornado warnings with 19 confirmed touchdowns throughout the state, nine flash flood warnings and four additional flood watches with many, many more to come. Kosha, this is the second major storm to hit the US this month and FEMA's response has been widely criticised as inadequate and disorganised. Uh, how much of an issue is this going to be coming up to the election? Because this has hit multiple states. It's not just Florida. With Hurricane Helene, we saw Georgia, North, South Carolina all impacted. Mm -hmm. It is on top of just the natural disaster and the loss of life. It is becoming a political story on two fronts. One is it's highlighting another dysfunction in the government or misaligned priorities where the, the FEMA funding has been slow to come out or constrained to $700 per person and were juxtaposed against the thousands of dollars that are being spent on housing illegal immigrants, on foreign interventions and all that. It's just not a, bad, a good look and it certainly goes to the heart of the contrast between the two campaigns. Secondarily, it's also going to potentially play a role in the actual mechanics of the election especially Georgia and North Carolina that are swing states and that have been won and lost in the last two elections on razor, razor thin margins, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 votes. Mm. You could see that coming to bear if certain people can't actually get to the polls or their mail-in ballots got destroyed in flooding, you know, wherever they were in the postal system. So that, that's a real problem too. There are, mm. is 30 days or 28 days left to try and remedy that, um, but it very well could have an impact. Now, as Kamala Harris ramps up her last-minute media blitz, Donald Trump has joined comedian Andrew Schultz on his podcast, Flagrant, and Trump was in fine form joking about Joe Biden's ability to fall asleep at the beach. When you're 82, <laughs> typically bathing suits aren't going to make you look great. Right, you're right. not going to be enhanced, yeah. all right? It's just one of those things. <laughs> I can't be sure about that, but yeah, yeah. Uh, typically you know. Depends what he's packing. He could. I don't know like what that. the hell he's packing, but it's, I don't want to. <laughs> and I don't want to know either. I don't know. But but he has an ability to fall asleep while on camera. He can lie down on one wow. of those things, yeah. and in minutes he's stone cold out. Kosha, he also gave an insight into uh, consequential matters, including his relationship with various world leaders. His uh, comments about uh, Modi were particularly interesting. He said he's as tough as nails. He's the nicest human being. But we had a couple of occasions where somebody was threatening India. I yeah. said, let me help. I'm very good with those people. Let me help. I will do it. I will do it. Then I will do anything necessary. We've defeated them for hundreds of years. Wow. He was talking about a certain country. Okay? Yeah. You can probably guess yeah. the country. Yeah, yeah. Can't, can't fathom which. You know the country. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I said, whoa, what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? So, no, they're all tough and they're all smart. Uh, and some are very good people. He's a good person. Uh, there's some are good people and some aren't good people. Mm -hmm. But they're yeah. all at the top of their game. Kosha, just a world apart from what we see with 
Kamala's uh, podcast appearance, whether it's uh, Call Her Daddy, where she was uh, just giving platitudes, just doing the usual messaging that she would do on CNN or anywhere else. She didn't seem to relax and understand the medium. And even with Stephen Colbert, there just wasn't authenticity there. They're just very different. And I do wonder whether... Uh, these appearances they're doing on podcasts and platforms we don't normally see candidates uh, is going to have a real impact leading up to that uh, poll date on November 5. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the, the open question. It remains to be seen. But it is clear that Trump, uh, his sense of humor, I've always said, is actually very underrated. He actually really is quite funny uh, when if people are able to look past the, the various quirks of his personality that many people don't like. He's actually really funny. And he has that common touch where he's able to just go and engage with people from all sorts of different ages and generations and formats and bob and weave between making a joke of how when you're 82, you probably shouldn't be wearing a bathing suit in public <laughs> to talking about uh, world affairs and Prime Minister Modi of India and everything in between. Uh, and you're right, she does come across as more, I've used this word, synthetic or inauthentic or manufactured, where she's sort of got these programming notes in her head. You can see it. And she just keeps going back to those phrases or, or catchphrases or buzzwords that we've heard so many times as opposed to being able to go with the flow. Um, I think the fact that Trump is going on these podcasts and even Kamala Harris would call her daddy is going to be interesting to see. Is it going to get out younger voters? These are typically listeners of these media outlets who don't show up to vote in general as mm. much. And if we see a little bit of a lift in this election uh, of the young vote, I do think that some of it probably could be attributed to the fact that they've really broadened the landscape of media outlets that they speak to, as opposed to just sticking with the five corporate media outlets. Now to another knucklehead moment from uh, Kamala Harris's running mate, Tim Walls, who said the US needs to get rid of the Electoral College. Uh, the comments were made during his speech at a fundraiser at the home of far-left California Governor Gavin Newsom. The Harris Walls campaign has walked back those comments already, saying in a statement that... Walls believes that every vote matters in the Electoral College and that he was merely commenting, commenting to a crowd of strong supporters about how the campaign is built to win 270 electoral votes. Uh, oh, I, I don't know how they can explain that comment uh, in, in those terms, but Tim Walls just seems to be a walking, talking disaster. Every time he's in front of a microphone, something goes wrong, whether it's a debate, an interview, or at a fundraiser here. Yes, and you know, it maybe calls into question how much vetting had been done when you have this truncated campaign and she's just basically came out of nowhere, come on the ticket in 75 days. Maybe this is a, a consequence of that. Not that Tim Waltz hasn't been around. He has been for a while, but not on the national stage. Uh, in terms of the Electoral College thing, the Democrat Party has been crying about that for a long time because they do tend to win the popular vote even if they lose the Electoral College. Hillary Clinton famously had that happen to her and uh, made sort of jabs, similar jabs. They talk about packing the Supreme Court, which is another thing that they, they flirt with, uh, where if you don't like the current balance, you can have more judges just added to it to change the ratio. They talk about giving statehood to Puerto Rico, which would also go to damaging the Electoral co College in its current state. So I think that is a belief held in many corners of the Democrat Party, and he just let it uh, come out. Yep, he said the quiet pit out loud. He's done, he's done that a few times. Um, and this is what's so remarkable about this election, because Trump is presented as this threat to democracy, threat to norms, threat to the republic, but it's the Democrats, as you've just explained, who are challenging everything from the uh, legitimacy of the Supreme Court to the Electoral College system. Now, 60 Minutes has come under intense criticism. We talked about this last night. It seems they've try to save Kamala Harris, removing one of her most incoherent answers from what was aired on Monday evening in the US. Here's a preview clip that 60 Minutes themselves posted on Sunday. It's her full answer, which was widely mocked. But it seems that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is not listening. Well, Bill, the work that we have done has resulted in a number of movements in that region by Israel that were very much prompted by 
or a result of uh, many things, including our advocacy for what needs to happen in the region. But here's what viewers actually saw on Monday night on television. But it seems that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is not listening. We are not going to stop pursuing what is necessary for the United States to be clear about where we stand on the need for this war to end. How do you explain that, Kosha? The power of editing uh, <laughs> can take the, the rambling and the verbose and make it look more coherent, even though I will say even the edited piece had far too many words. Like she always uses 10 to 12 words where one word would suffice and really effective communicators are good at using fewer words because you make the point sharper. Um, it also goes to the point of how there are two realities and there's sort of the, the younger group or the more high information consumers out there who live in social media and on the internet and on, and on X who did see and will see those unedited comments, they mm. went viral. And then you've got the more traditional, maybe more baby boomers, people still consuming only uh, corporate media and television That's media it. who will see they'll, that edited piece. They'll be none the wiser, Kosha. They'll be none the wiser. Thank you so much for your time this evening.